Hello and welcome. This is Angie with TheCountrySheetCottage.net. So I get asked all the time what printer I use with my Cricut machine. So I thought I would compare a couple of different printers. So this is my standard printer that I use every day. So it's an HP Photo Envy and I actually have the 6255. Now, that's an older model. The equivalent of that in the newest model is like a 7155. So if you're looking for something really similar, it would be like the 7155 where I have the 6255. Now I've used an HP printer for many, many, many years. Um, I've loved the Envy series. I don't think you can go wrong with the Photo Envy. But the latest thing on the market is the Canon Pixma. This is the TS9521C, and it's being labeled as like the crafter's printer for a few different reasons. And I wanted to give it a try. I wanted to see if I liked it as much as my HP and if I could recommend this. So we are gonna compare and contrast the two printers so that you can decide which one you want to use in your craft room. Now, either of these will work with your Cricut machine. Other printers will work with your Cricut machine as well. These are just a couple of like my favorite ones. And this is the one that's been in my home all the time, that HB 6255. Okay, so first let's talk about pricing because it's all gonna come down to pricing in the end most likely. So the HP Photo Envy, the latest model, averages about $180 at all the places I looked. Now, I will drop links in the description below for both these printers as well as other things I use during this video. The Canon Pixma is about $250. So it is about $70 more than the HP MV series. So that's the first thing. Second thing is gonna be ink. So that's your biggest expense when looking at a printer. Couple different ways to buy ink. Like you can just go to the store when you run out of ink, right? Um, and get ink for both these printers. But both of them have some kind of subscription service where you can get your ink. And I wanted to go through those because those can save you some money depending on how you use them. So the HP is called HP Instant Ink. And it's actually a monthly fee. And it's anywhere from 99 cents on up. Cheapest one is 99 cents a month. And you get, no, you get a certain amount of pages for that monthly fee. So for the 99 cents, you get 15 pages. And then every page after that is basically like a dollar for 10 pages. So the 99 cents makes it seven cents a page. If you were to go over your 15 pages, it would be like 10 cents a page, if that makes sense. I love Instant Ink. That's what I use every month. Because when I say 99 cents a month, you get to print 15 pages. You can print 15 pages of whatever you want. You can print 15 eight and a half by 11 sheets at best quality that uses the most ink for that one price. So I know that I like to print at best quality when I'm using, when I'm doing anything with my Cricut on either machine. I like to do, choose that best quality option. And I know that uses more ink. So I feel like HP Instant Ink is the solution for me, but a lot of people don't like that monthly fee. So the other only other option is like buy the cartridges as they run out, which you definitely can with the HP printer. Canon, same thing. You can buy them as they run out or they partner with Amazon Dash. It's a little bit of a different program wherein your printer basically tells Amazon Dash when you run out of ink and it orders it from Amazon for you. So you just pay for the cartridge, but you do get a discount on your cartridges and it's like 10%. Now, the pricing on the per sheet, so I can't calculate it as easily, right? With the HP Instant Ink. And both of these, by the way, like HP and Canon, if you go with those automatic subscriptions, the printer connects with your Wi-Fi and basically orders the ink for you. So the whole benefit of that is you never run out of ink. You never have to remember the ink at the store. Both of those valid points. The information I could find on the Pixma is that it averages like 15 to 16 cents a page color. I couldn't really determine if that was like the best quality prints or just regular prints. But I would say that the Pixma is gonna be slightly more expensive per page than the HP, just with the research I've done. Now I could run like hundreds of pages through both and kind of determine that, but 
I don't have the resources to do that right now, so I just had to do a little bit of online research. But I did want to warn you that the programs for both are different and that the Pixma might be a little bit more to operate on a per page basis. Okay, so we've talked about pricing of both of these. So now the question is like, what are the differences? So let's talk about size first of all. You can see there's a slight size difference. So these are the printers shut. So the, they are, this the HP is about like six and a half, 17 and a half, and with the tray closed, about like 16 and a half this way. So to operate the HP, all you have to do is open this exit tray and that makes it like 21 and a half. So it increases it this way. The only other thing you might need to do is open the scanner because it does have a scanner at the top. Now this model, see how this one has the automatic feed tray on the scanner? There is a model of the Envy that has that automatic feed. I don't opt for that because it's more money and I don't use it. Um, so you would need to open that scanner. So I have this um, usually in a little cubby above my desk and this doesn't actually open all the way. It op only opens about this far in that cubby, but that's plenty enough room for me to stick anything I need to scan in there and then close it back up. So, if we say it just needs to open a little bit, I would say you were looking at about like a nine inch with it open. The Pixma needs a little bit of a bigger area. So first of all, shut. You're looking at about eight inches high. Shut about 15 inches this way and about 19 inches this way. Now to print regular eight and a half by 11 paper, you need to flip up this screen. So it just kind of flips up from the, the, um, the front there. And then it, a paper tray opens like an ex exit tray and this has to flip out. So that has to happen to operate. That exit tray is pretty large if you can't tell. So the exit tray and everything makes it about 26. So, but it can stick out, you know, past like something you have it in. Now, the trick is this one can print up to eight and a half by 11 and it prints on like four by six or five by seven like photo paper, but it all goes through this front tray. On the Pixma, any special media that is not your standard eight and a half by 11 has to go through the back tray. So this back tray slips out, flips up, and it's pretty tall. So it is, once that tray is open, you're looking at about 16 inches tall and total like back of this tray all the way to the front. Like if I have that front tray open, you're looking at like 35 inches. So it is quite a bit bigger, especially if you need to fold it out and use the functionality of this back tray. And we will be talking about like when you would use that back tray and looking at printing with both machines. So don't worry about that. So those are the size of the machines themselves. Now we've talked a little bit about the size of paper, but let's go into that. The HP prints up to eight and a half by 11. Simple, that's your paper size. It will also print like four by six or five by seven photo paper, that type of thing. But eight and a half by 11 is gonna be your max. The Pixma, however, will print up to a 12 by 12 sheet. So that's kind of why it's called the crafter's printer because you can print your own like 12 by 12 cardstock and that type of thing right in the Pixma. It has to go through that back tray, like I said. Again, it'll print like standard eight and a half by 11. It'll print all those small photo papers. It'll print like square photo papers. There's a tons of different options for sizes. Maximum is gonna be 12 inches by 12 inches. So that's for the Pixma. So that right there might decide it for you. If you need a printer that prints those 12 by 12 sheets, the Pixma is definitely for you. Now both printers will print full width, no borders. So this will print 12 by 12 all the way to the edges, both ways. This will print eight and a half by 11 all the way to the edges both ways. Both have like best quality or photo printing capability, but we're gonna take a look at some things I printed so you can kind of see the differences between the two. Now let's talk about time to print. So you might be concerned about how long they take to print. 
I didn't find a whole ton of difference. So I always use best quality, like I said, when I am printing for my Cricut machine. And if I had both these printers on best quality, I don't really see a difference in the time it takes to actually print the whatever I'm printing. So I don't think that time is really a difference factor. They're basically about the same. And I did want to mention before we look at the stuff I printed that both of these will print on mobile or desktop. If you're worried about something that will print with your mobile phone, both of these have applications that will do that. So you don't need to worry about that either. Both of these will do the same function. So now that we've talked about all of that, let's take a closer look at some of the things I've printed and printing with both of these machines. And then we can get into the final tally and which printer I like best at the end. So first of all, let's take a look at printing just regular eight and a half by 11 printer paper in both machines. So now let's take a look at some of the differences. So this is the HP printed on best quality. This is the Canon printed on best quality and you can see there's not a ton of difference. This one is the Canon printed just regular. So you can see there's a huge color difference, hopefully you can tell, between best quality and regular. Now, with the HP, in the settings, I can basically always change it to best quality. I might have to tell it that it's like not plain paper, but I can get it to change to best quality. For the Canon, some of the papers, I had trouble getting it to change, like the 12 by 12 papers. I could get it to change on the eight and a half by 11, but like on the 12 by 12, I had a hard time getting it to change and some of the matte papers wouldn't change to best quality. And we'll take a look at that as we look at those papers. But I did want to caution you that there is a color difference between regular and best. And you might also see streaks in like a regular print if you don't turn it on best quality. So if you're having trouble with your printer, always try changing it to best quality first. But sometimes the printer itself will not let you and you'll get something that you're not happy with, which is what happened in this case. All right, so let's move on to photos. So I'm using this HP photo paper in both printers. And as you can see, like it's a white glossy photo paper. So let's take a look at how to print on photo paper with both printers. And here's the prints we made. So this one is the HP. This is the Canon best quality. And this is the Canon where I did not change the settings to best quality. You can definitely see a difference in this one that's not best quality. Like the colors are just really not good. But the difference between the Canon best quality and the HP best quality is minimal. So they both look really good. And the differences are a little bit uh, you can probably see a little bit of difference, but overall they're probably comparable in quality. So let's move on and try printing larger things like a 12 by 12 paper. All right, so this is just a regular 12 by 12 piece of white cardstock, and we are gonna feed that through the Canon. Again, this paper is too large to work in the HP, so we'll only experiment with the Canon, but let's take a look at how to print 12 by 12.
All right, so here's a couple of sheets of 12 by 12 I printed. One I just printed like regular quality and the other I tried to print high quality. You can see they both look exactly the same. This is the one I printed on eight and a half by 11 on the Canon on high quality. And you can see it looks quite a bit better, like the colors are more vibrant than these two. So I was not able to get like a super vibrant print on the 12 by 12. Yes, it does print 12 by 12, but it doesn't print the colors as I would like them or the colors as they appear on my screen, I guess is more accurate. So I wasn't completely happy with the 12 by 12 print. I would like it to print like high quality like this one, but I was getting like more of a muted color. So let's move on and talk about printing on sticker paper. So for the sticker paper, I'm gonna be using the Cricut printable sticker paper in my Canon. Now this sticker paper, if you've ever tried to use it, is super thick. I cannot get this to work in the HB. It's way too thick to feed through the feed tray, but I'm hoping that the it will feed through the back of the Canon. But in the HP, I'm gonna print on the printable vinyl instead, which will make stickers, but they're much thinner. So I'm gonna try both with the print and cup function on my Cricut, and then we'll take a look at the results. All right, so here are my stickers. So this one is with my HP. This one is with the Canon. And I tried two different times to get it to print on like best quality and get brighter colors. This HP print is way brighter than the Canon versions. And I never could get that really bright print on my Canon. So I was much happier with the print off my HP. However, I can't get these super thick sticker papers through my HP at all. So I can only get the thinner sticker papers through the HP. So if that bothers you, that could be an issue. Now I will note, I do have my auto bleed on, on my Cricut. So there is like a fuzzy line, but you can see it on all the prints because I have my auto bleed and that will cut off as I run them through my Cricut machine and make my stickers. So now let's talk about which printer you should get. All right, so now the only question left is which of these printers should you get to use with your Cricut machine? So I was really hoping that I would love the Canon because I wanted that extra functionality of the 12 by 12 prints as well as those thick sticker papers, but I'm just not crazy about the colors. And I tried multiple ways, multiple settings, and it's just super inconsistent for me where I can get like the same quality print out of my HP like, every single time I print. And I cannot seem to do that with the Canon. I seem to get like muted colors on some things and then other things I pick best quality and I get super bright colors comparable to the HP. So for me, I'm gonna keep the HP in my craft room. Um, I'm gonna skip the, I guess 12 by 12 printing is not for me nor the big thick sticker papers. I guess I won't be using those. But if you are just dead set, like you need that 12 by 12 print or you need those super thick sticker papers, I really think the Canon is the only way to go. You might be able to waste a bunch of paper, play with the settings and get something that works for you. I'm not saying you can't, it's just that I tried multiple things and was not able to get a consistent print every time that looked like the HP version. So for me, I'm gonna stick with the HP in my craft room. I'm gonna stick with that limit of that eight and a half by 11 size, but get great prints every time. So once again, just a quick rundown. The HP, I have the 6255. If you can find it on clearance somewhere, more power to you. The current version of it is the 7155. I'm pretty sure they'll be the same. Um, I've had several different versions of this Photo Envy over the years, loved every one of them. Retails approximately about $180 if you find it on sale, more power to you. The Pixma is the TS9521C and it retails for around $250. If you get it on sale, more power to you. 
Again, I feel like the prints, like per print, will be more with the Canon than the HP. I do like the Instant Ink program for myself. I find that I can find a monthly fee that works for me and I don't have to worry about how many times I print. Like I can print as many of these full bleed eight and a half by 11 best quality sheets as I would like, or as many of these photos as I would like, as long as I'm within my plan limit. And they only cost me like, I'm on a plan and I think it costs like five or six cents a print. And that's like almost equivalent of like what I would do if I printed at Walgreens or CVS. So I just print like four by sixes at home right on the Envy and then use them in my projects or to hang around the house or whatever. And I can do the same with like eight by 10 prints, five by seven prints, that type of thing. I can just print them right at home on my printer. So it's one benefit that I like with the Envy and using HP Instant Ink so that I don't have to worry about printing and how much it's gonna cost me. I know how much it's gonna cost me as long as I don't go over my limit. And I felt like over time, I could set a limit that worked for me. I mean, I work from home. I do a lot of printing for my Cricut. So I have obviously have a higher allowance than most people probably would, but you can start at that lowest allowance and kind of work your way up if you would like. But I personally love the Instant Ink program. But if you are dead set on the Canon, you want that 12 by 12, I would look into the program with Amazon Dash just because it sends you that ink automatically and you get like that 10% discount. So be a little bit cheaper and you'll never run out of ink. Trust me, having ink delivered to your home, it's like a whole new world. <laughs> it is amazing to just have that ink delivered to your home and not have to worry about going to the store to buy ink. So I hope this comparison helped you. If you have any questions about anything we've covered, please drop down to the comment section and ask those. You can also find in the description below links to these printers, and I'll also link to some of the papers I used just in case that you wanted to purchase those. But if I miss a link, you can comment below and tell me that as well. If this video helped you, please give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos like this all the time and you don't wanna miss any of those. So thank y'all so much for joining me and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.